So it's the next day and I want to start working on this bed again. And I know I said I was probably going to leave this plywood to the end, but I think I might try and get the bow out of this one uh, this morning because I want to put the curve on the bottom and that's just going to be easier to do the flatter it is. I use plywood a lot because people usually don't want to spend a ton of money. So if you're painting something, I usually recommend using plywood and facing it with nicer lumber just because you'll never be able to tell the difference that it's plywood if it's being painted. I've never really had a bowing issue like this because I build out of higher grade plywoods, um, birch and maple veneered plies, which is why I wasn't expecting such a big issue with this cherry ply, especially for the price it was. But my understanding of this situation is, is the concave side has lost moisture faster than the convex side, causing it to shrink and curl. So by adding moisture to the concave side and drying out the convex side, it starts to flatten out. Apparently this process happens fairly quickly, quickly enough that most of the sites I read that tell you how to do this say to keep an eye on it because it will actually start to bow in the other direction if you leave it out. Then you're supposed to place it out in the sun or on a flat surface, it could bow in the other direction. So I think I'm going to try that on a small piece this morning. Our silver lining to the situation, if that doesn't work, is that bed frame is being recessed below the side rails about an inch so that it doesn't slide off the top of this platform, which means if worse comes to worse, I could be able to rely on um, putting a dado across this whole span and sinking a rail in there that the mattress will also sit on. And um, by screwing it in, it might help straighten this ply out a little bit. I think between the drying technique, um, the bolts pulling these ends square, as well as adding that rail, that should take care of the bowing on this end. For the other end, the bottom of this is fine because it's sitting inside that groove. It's the top I'm having a problem with. Um, if the moisture works on the footboard, I'm going to try it on the headboard. But if worse comes to worse with this one, I could probably make some sort of uh, frame for the back side of this that screws to the ply to straighten it out. That's kind of like a last effort. I would prefer not to do that at all. But if this won't stay, don't stay straight, I'm just going to have to do it. The headboard is not going to be as noticeable because it's going to be up back against the wall. And looking at it head on, you can't tell it's bowing. It's only when you stand at the side that you could see. It's not going to mess with the structure or the integrity of the piece at all. It's more of an aesthetic problem. So I just lightly wet that whole concave surface with a, a sponge and they recommend warm water. And I'm going to flip it over and put it outside my shop so that the, con the convex side sticking up and that is supposedly supposed to flatten it. I'm going to keep an eye on it and see how it goes. So I tried that wetting method. I had this sitting outside for quite some time, definitely over an hour, and absolutely nothing has changed, and the concave side is completely dry now. This tells me one of two things. Number one, that method is a bunch of bollocks and it doesn't work. However, um, it seems to be a very widely used method with people saying it has worked for them before. Or number two, this bow in here is not necessarily from um, an unequilibrium in moisture, but more so just because it's such a long piece, it's kind of naturally curving. In any case, I'm not going to keep wetting this down and trying to fix it. I'm basically just going to continue by doing all of the things I think might work to fix it. So I'll probably end up splining the top with veneer, datoing in the bar for the mattress, as well as hopefully once it's bolted together to the bed, it will become straight. There are many different ways to tackle arc cutting. Um, I've seen people make some pretty elaborate jigs, so you could cut it with a router. Since this is on a footboard and this arc is going to be very close to the ground, it's not in the same line of sight as your eyes. In order to really get a good look at it, you would literally have to bend down and stare at it. 
which just isn't going to happen on a lot of people's bedrooms. So I'm just doing a rough arc that I'm probably going to cut out on my bandsaw and sand smooth with a belt sander. Super simple. Um, I absolutely hate plastic molding. Loathe might actually be a better word for it. But every once in a while I have to buy it because it's um, a certain style that they only make in plastic that a customer wants. So I have this piece left over from a built-in I just did. And all I did was tape it in my corners. I taped it the same way over here. So you're taping it at a little bit of an angle. I found my center point and taped it there as well. And then I just drew a line. Obviously check with your eye to make sure it looks uniform. And it does. As long as your eye picks up on uniformity, it, um, that's all that really matters. If your eye can't tell it's a little bit off, if your eye can't pick up on little subtleties, then the customer's not going to as well. But this actually looks pretty good. So I'm going to take that um, plastic molding off and cut this down. So if you're not like me, you wouldn't have used a lousy piece of junk to cut your arch and you won't have to spend probably a half an hour cleaning up the edge. I honestly don't even know why I still use that bandsaw. It doesn't track. It doesn't cut well. It's really just a hunk of junk. There's that finished sanded curve. It looks pretty good from here. I'm going to pop the legs back on real quick and throw it on the bed just to make sure it looks okay with everything together. And then I'll probably start addressing the veneer on the, the ply edges of this footboard. So I have two scrap pieces left over from the cutoffs of my side rails. And I was going to just use those for veneer, but now I think for that top piece, I'm going to actually make kind of a spline for the top to help twist it back into shape. Um, I really think over time, especially when it gets to the customer's house, which is going to be temperate controlled, unlike my shop, which is not, that these things will twist and naturally go back into shape considering that I got them flat and like I keep saying they are a very high grade plywood but I don't want to rely on it and you also have to think about long-term consistency with these things so I'd rather spend a little extra time straightening them in my shop getting them the way I want them and uh, feeling better about the fact that they'll more than likely stay that over the course of time so what I'm, I'm going to make this spline part first, this veneered spline, and then I'm probably going to have to trim down the plywood on my footboard, but I want to make this first. So I'm basically going to be trimming this to the same width as the plywood. I don't want the spline on top. I want the edge grain showing. I don't want the spline on top like this because this is more likely to bend. You could twist it like this. If I have the spline on top like this, that, pl that plywood is not going to be able to bend the spline out of shape. It's almost impossible to do even with my hands pushing a, uh, a lot of force on it. Whereas, whereas if you did it like this, you could see even pushing down on it, there's a ton of give. So the first thing, this rough side I'll probably make the bottom. So the first thing I'm going to do is trim this down to size. And that's going to be the width of my plywood, which is about three quarters of an inch. So right now this is about an inch thick. So what I'm going to do is come up half an inch, so I'm left at half an inch on top, and I'm going to come in about a quarter on either side since it's three quarters inch wide. So that will give me a quarter inch wide and a half inch little cutout on either side. I'll cut a receiving uh, groove for this spline which will be about a quarter inch 
thick by a half inch tall, and then I can attach this to that piece. So that's the rough shape you're left with after all those cuts. And I wanted this spline thick because this is hopefully what is going to keep that board aligned. Now I don't think that this is going to completely straighten this piece, but I'm hoping that each little uh, change I make straightens it enough so that when everything's said and done, it's, it's pretty flat. So now what I'm going to do is... I'm going to have to take my plywood out of the two sides. I'm going to have to trim it to account for this thickness, which is, I believe, about a quarter of an inch. So I'll trim it by a quarter, and then I'll cut a spline right in the center of that up here and see how that fits. My plywood out, and I didn't move my fence from when I cut this um, second ridge here. So the thickness of what I have here is the same thickness as what I'm going to be adding. So without moving my fence, I just raise my blade and I should be able to rip that piece off the top and this should still fit in my mortise perfectly. I have my plywood here and I have that piece just kind of sitting on top and you can see how I'm just going to remove these three center plies about a half inch down and this should fit on top of it and I'll work um, a dual purpose as a spline and also as my uh, veneer top to cover the plywood edge and also hopefully it takes um, a little bit of curve out of this plywood. So I'm going to put my tall fence on my fence and then I'll set it up to cut on the inside of this line so I can just flip it and it will cut the exact same distance on the other side and then trim out the middle. have that piece in place it definitely straightened out that curve not completely but it did help I think once this is in place the legs are in place and that um, rail for the mattress is in place everything is clamped and glued is really going to be when I can see how straight it is and I think that it will straighten out then I'm going to pop this off because it's um, a little bit longer than what I need. So I have a couple other things I have to do today that aren't this bed. So I think first thing in the morning, I'm going to run to the store and get all the lumber to make the inside frame. Because then once that's done, I pretty much just have to taper these legs and deal with this uh, bet plywood, glue everything together, and then this will be ready for stain. My goal by the end of today is to have the footboard clamped. A couple things I have to do is finish the legs, um, make the veneer for the bottom edge, and I'm going to route a groove to put a piece of oak into. And then I want to clamp this all together flat on the surface so as the glue dries, hopefully it stays true the way it is. So the first thing I'm going to do to finish this up, and it goes without saying, the headboard, the process for the headboard is going to be pretty much identical to this so I'm only going to show finishing up the footboard. So I have that groove for my plywood and I have those grooves, uh, those mortises for my tenons on both of these. Now originally since this is such a um, streamed line piece of furniture I wanted to have the bolts that put this bed together hidden but because there's so much going on in such a small space, this is only two inches square, it was just basically, uh, not necessarily impossible, which is, it would have been a ton more extra work to figure out a way to hide those bolts um, instead of just drilling them through the front. And as I especially decided to drill them when I saw the color the customer wanted this bed to be. 
So this is the color of the dresser that's in their room right now, and it's a very, very dark. I've already kind of stain tested. It's either going to be some sort of red mahogany or red oak stain, a much, much darker stain. So if I have a little plug on the front side of these feet, it won't stand out in contrast as much as I was a little nervous about if this was staying uh, clear coated or a lighter stain. So I'm just going to drill through the front and save myself a ton of headache. And as well as with the headboard, you're going to be putting those bolts through the back end so you won't even see them on the headboard. The bolts I ordered for this are not going to be coming in the mail until probably tomorrow. But I know they're 3 8 inch bolts so I could just drill a 3 8 inch hole through the front. And all I did was transfer all of my marks to the front side of my piece. The reason I did that is because I don't want any tear out coming from the front. I want that to be a nice clean hole. And this hole is going to go about halfway through my mortise. So I'm probably going to have to re-drill it once the plywood's in there because it's going to be halfway in the plywood. It should fill up a little bit with glue, but if I have a nice straight hole for my drill press, it'll be easy to just clean that out. So then once you have that hole in there, it comes time to put this all together. That hole is going to correspond to about halfway down and halfway in the middle of this tenon you'll be able to cut out a recess for the nut and that hole will go through the leg, through the tenon, into the side rail and can be um, really ratcheted into place sturdy. The second thing I'm going to do is cut these legs down to size and finally taper them and then um, after cutting the groove in here this whole thing can be glued together. Now the head of the bolt is probably going to be a little bit bigger than 3 8 which is nice because once it's all said and done, I could countersink a hole in here and then plug it with a piece of cherry, and that's how I'll hide that bolt head. So those are my holes, and you can see how it comes through perfectly centered in that mortise which is exactly what you want to see because then it will be perfectly centered in that tenon and just like I said it goes about halfway through that plywood so you can see what I meant by when that plywood's in place and since it's going to be glued into place I'll have to go back and drill out this hole to remove some of the glue that leaks out but in general that's just about perfect. I'm going to trim these down to their final height I think they're only, I'll have to double check, but I think as of right now they're only about an inch and three eighths long. I believe that is my original mark. So I'm going to cut those and then taper these down. And to do that, I'm just going to use a hand plane.